The next situation I'd like to analyze is a conical pendulum, which is simple in principle, and certainly simple conceptually, but the analysis can get rather difficult notationally. Again, this situation is uniform circular motion. The net force is radially inward. It's entirely in a horizontal plane, though we see a lot of the extent of this system is vertical. We've got a tension, we've got a string that's hanging down and to the side, so we've got all sorts of dimensionality here. But in terms of the motion, it's entirely uniform circular motion in a single plane. That simplifies matters a lot when we do the analysis. What forces are here? The only forces acting on the bob of the pendulum are its weight, that's the force of gravity pulling down on it, and the force of tension from the string, which pulls in the direction of the string. What determines the pendulum's speed and period? We might expect a number of things. We might expect that the mass of the pendulum makes a difference. We might expect the length of the pendulum makes a difference. We might expect that the angle at which it spins makes a difference. We'd have to actually analyze it to find out how much of this is true. So what we'd like to do in this situation is start with what we hope are sufficient information to characterize the system, say, the mass of the bob, the length of the pendulum, the angle at which it's out from vertical. Maybe we can then find the tension in the string and the period of rotation of the pendulum. One important quantity that we need to specify for the uniform circular motion is the radius of the path. That's not given directly with the information here, however we can derive it from what we have. The radius of the path, r, is just the length of the cable times the sine of the angle beta, because the side that's of length r is opposite the angle beta. Now the only force that's acting on this bob that has any horizontal component is the tension in the cable. So the tension's horizontal component must provide all of the centripetal force. The vertical forces have to cancel the weight down and the vertical component of tension. So let's make a free body diagram for this situation. We have the weight acting downward with magnitude mg, the tension acting upward and inward. The net force, when we add those two forces together, is purely horizontal. Thus, when we break the tension into its vertical and horizontal components, the vertical component has to exactly cancel the weight, so it has magnitude the same as the magnitude of the weight, or mg. The horizontal component must be all of the centripetal force, and that has magnitude mv squared over r. Remember, of course, that r is L times sine of the angle beta. Also, we can link the two components of this tension by trigonometry. The tangent of the angle beta is equal to the horizontal component of the force divided by the vertical component of the force. We can see that because it's opposite over adjacent for this right triangle. To find the results of any particular question in terms of quantities that might be of interest, it may be necessary to recast the centripetal force in terms of the period t of the cycling rather than in terms of the tangential speed. When we do that, the formulas get longer, but it's just algebra. We just have to remember that the speed v is equal to 2 pi r, r being the radius, over t, t being the period. Make those substitutions, and then it's just a matter of algebra finding the solution for whatever quantity it is that you're looking for.